I panicked when the organizers of this event asked me to give a TED talk on feminism. I fear that I'm a fraud. I fear that no one cares about feminism. And then I realized that these fears were the best reasons to stand up here. So I'll start by establishing my feminist street cred. I was born in 1975 to a hippie mother who had me out of wedlock. As an adult, ooh, oh, nuts. <laughs> hippie mother, Volkswagen bug in the background. We're good now. <clears throat> as an adult, I realized how difficult it must have been for my mom, but as a child, I never realized that anything about our family was abnormal. My mom drove an awesome yellow Volkswagen Bug. The entire back seat was filled with books, and it was my little kingdom. Mom and I, sorry, mom and I sang and danced to Free to Be You and Me on the record player in our one bedroom apartment. Mom decorated our living room with a poster that said, Ginger Rogers did everything Fred Astaire did, except backwards and in high heels. Mom took me to the bookstore every payday and read me Cinderella every time I asked, even though the idea of Prince Charming made her cringe. We watched TV on a tiny set with rabbit ears, and I grew up wanting to be a combination of Laura Ingalls and Wonder Woman. <laughs> Basically, my mom instilled feminism in me before I even realized there were any other options. My mom had to leave college to raise me and we lived paycheck to paycheck. Mom pushed me to do well in school so that I could get a college scholarship, get a good job, and never, ever have to rely on somebody else to take care of me. She taught me to be open-minded and independent, and she filled me with the belief that I could do anything. And then I got to junior high. <laughs> and I rebelled against my rebellious mother in the only way I knew how. I became a cheerleader. I caked on the sparkly blue eyeliner, and I teased my hair to heights that would rival the women in Bon Jovi videos. I stopped reading novels, and I started reading Seventeen magazine. My mom watched in horror, but she let me be me. It wasn't until I begged to be allowed out of the honors program, because I wanted to be cool, not smart, that my mom put up a fight. And I thank my mom for that one. Long story short. I graduated from high school, I went to college, I studied literature and feminist theory in graduate school, I went to every Lilith Fair, I worked for Planned Parenthood, I got married, but I didn't change my name. I became a teacher, I had a daughter, <laughs> and I recently spent a year playing roller derby under the name Lady Macbeth. <laughs> Feminism is simply ingrained in my being. I feel that it pervades all that I do. Feminism influences the way I raise my daughter and the way I teach my kids, my students. So wasn't I shocked when a woman whom I consider an open-minded, progressive person, you know, someone like me, um, recently told me that feminism is dead, that women are equal, that it's just not an issue anymore. My heart stopped. I felt sick. I wanted to yell at her and list the chilling reasons why we still need feminism. Women still earn less than men for the same job. Hard-earned reproductive rights are being chipped away. The double standard of slut versus stud and bossy versus assertive punishes girls and praises boys for the same exact behavior. Television. <laughs> Television and social media glorify the mean girl and unrealistic standards of beauty. Tweens blazon juicy and ratchet across their bottoms. And many people, teens and adults, think feminist is a bad word. I did some research. In a thoroughly unscientific survey, I asked 100 PV students to define feminist. Then I asked if they considered themselves a feminist. 
the results were interesting. 34 of 100 students labeled themselves feminist, yet the majority, like 95% of those who said, no, I am not a feminist, added a note to the effect, but I believe that men and women should be equal. My conclusion, most teens are actually feminists, they just don't know they are. The stereotype of the militant, man-hating, bra-burning feminist lingers in the American consciousness. Sure, some feminists fit that stereotype, and I'm grateful to them. For without them, feminists like myself may not have had the opportunities, both educationally and socially, that have been afforded to us in the latter part of the 20th century. Some people dislike the word feminist because they believe it's anti-male. Shall we invent a new word that's inclusive and gender neutral and makes everybody happy all the time? Peopleist, everyoneist, gender egalitarianist. No, that's absurd. Changing the terminology only distracts from the real issues. Words have power. They can evoke fear, hatred, and violence. But they can also evoke strength, hope, and empathy. There are a lot of bad words out there, but feminist is not the F word. I want women and boys, men and girls, I mix that up. I want women and men, boys and girls, to be, <laughs> to be unafraid to call themselves feminist. In choosing to label themselves, feminists can ensure that the work of their parents and grandparents was not in vain. So what is a feminist exactly? In my world, a feminist does three things. First, a feminist educates. A feminist looks to the lessons of history and remembers that there was a time in America when girls were considered inferior to boys, when women did not have the same rights and opportunities as men. Consider the 19th Amendment, passed in 1920, which ensured a woman's right to vote. Prior to this, only a handful of states allowed women to vote. American women have had full voting rights since 1920. That's 94 years, a blip on the timeline of human history. And we have a habit of romanticizing that history. I vaguely remember learning about the suffrage movement in history class. I pictured some dour-faced Victorian women suffering because they had to wear corsets and sashes while picketing for the right to vote. And then after a protest march or two, the men in charge, who were wearing top hats and monocles, um, realized how silly they were being and said, of course women should have the right to vote. It was a magical moment in which men and women shook hands and went arm in arm in the poll, singing that uh, song, Sister Suffragette from Mary Poppins. My warped sense of history reveals two myths attached to the feminist movement that women can only be celebrated by making men look foolish, and that the struggle for rights was easily won. In reality, the history of the women's rights movement is complicated and has yet to have a happy ending. In reality, it took over 40 years for the 19th Amendment to become law. During those years, many activists, men and women, were beaten, starved, and imprisoned for advocating women's rights. When the 19th Amendment was finally brought before Congress in 1919, 56 senators voted for it, but 25 senators voted against it. Then it took over a year for 36 of the then 48 states to ratify it. Mississippi did not ratify the 19th Amendment until 1984. <laughs> a feminist educates by taking the time to learn about the past and to teach others. A feminist accepts that the word history is biased and that we need to make space for her story. A feminist celebrates all the civil rights victories of the past but recognizes that we as humans are not done yet. Second, a feminist empowers. 
I think that some people avoid the word feminist because it seems exclusionary, because they think, um, they think it reduces experience to a binary opposition of male versus female. I generally reject the notion that life can be so black and white, so pink and blue. I also reject the, no the notion that a person can only be one thing. My daughter, McKenna, she's over there, sorry, is seven. I want her to dream and grow and thrive. She is at the age where she truly believes she will grow up to be a ninja scientist ballet dancer. And she will. I do not want anyone to ever make her feel that she cannot do something because she is a girl, or that she should do something because she is a girl. An avowed feminist friend of mine declared that she would never let her baby daughter get into the whole Disney princess thing. McKenna was four at the time, and into all things pink and sparkly and musical. So I chuckled at this new mom's naivety. Plus, every English teacher knows that censoring something just makes it more appealing. And isn't the fact that she wouldn't let her daughter choose her toys inherently anti-feminist? But I saw my friend's point. The pink princess culture emphasizes physical beauty over intelligence and saccharine kindness over unique strengths. Most egregious is the theme of a woman finding fulfillment only through a romantic relationship with a man. I now know why my mom cringed when I asked for those Cinderella stories. The old school princesses, Snow White, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, had to be rescued by a man. Even the modern princess stories, like The Princess and the Frog, Tangled, and even Frozen, suggest that a princess who saves the day needs a man by her side to do it. I'll pause here for booze. I know there are a lot of Frozen fans out there. I am one of them. When I saw the movie, I was thrilled how they inverted the act of true love theme to be about Anna sacrificing herself for Elsa, not some kiss from Hans or Kristoff. But that love story theme is still present, as well as the message Elsa gets from her parents that she needs to hide her true self. My heart breaks when Elsa sings, conceal, don't feel, don't let them know. She later sings, no right, no wrong, no rules for me, I'm free. But her parents have to die, and she has to live in isolation to feel this way. The point I'm trying to make is that we can't create independent and intelligent young people by stifling them. I believe a feminist respects gender expression in all people, from the very feminine to the very masculine and to every iteration in between. The princess warrior, if you will. Feminists need to empower themselves to express their unique gifts and encourage others to do the same. <laughs> A feminist enlightens. Activism is inherent to being a feminist. But activism does not have to be a huge public march or movement or program. Feminist activism occurs in actions big and small. Feminist activists inspire others to think and act. I see feminist activists everywhere. In soldiers, who happen to be women, and nurses who happen to be men, and in any professional that shrugs at gender expectations in order to help others. In celebrities like actor Avin Joya, who founded Straight But Not Narrow, a program that trains allies of LGBTQ youth. Their motto, we're all different. We believe that those differences make us interesting. In characters like Katniss Everdeen and Hermione Granger, and in the readers who envision themselves as these heroes. I see feminist activists in the Arizona Cardinals and the NFL for putting pressure on the governor of Arizona to veto a law that would have allowed business owners to discriminate against individual customers under the guise of religious freedom. The Cardinals issued a statement that said, what so many love about football is its ability to bring people together. We do not support 
anything that has the potential to divide, exclude, and discriminate. I see feminist activists in Malala Yousafzai, a Pakistani teen who was shot in the head because she spoke out against the Taliban's ban on education for girls. She survived, and her pain has only emboldened her in her fight for education for all. Malala said, women are strong. Women can do anything. Come out and struggle for your rights. Nothing can happen without your voice. I see feminist activists <clears throat> in teens, like blogger Tavi Gevinson, who started Rookie, a feminist website for teenagers. As Tavi stated at TEDx Teen, feminism is not a rule book, but a conversation, a discussion, a process. Of course, I see feminism in McKenna, who said to me the other day, hey mom, did you know that the Statue of Liberty has broken chains at her feet because she is a free woman? I see it in the amazing students who organized TEDx Perkiom and Valley in order to spread worthwhile ideas. And in every person, male or female, who is unafraid to call themselves a feminist. A good friend of mine told her daughter, we are all in the process of becoming. This quote has been attributed to activist and poet Audre Lorde. But when I hear it, I hear the voice of my friend, encouraging her daughter to never settle. Feminist activism occurs in moments like these. When I dreamed in the back seat of my mom's bug, I was in the process of becoming a feminist. As I give this talk, I am still evolving as a feminist. I won't settle for it's just not an issue anymore. A feminist starts something, whether it's a conversation, a club, or a whole movement. My hope is that more people, men and women, will embrace this F word and proudly call themselves a feminist. Thank you.